my God. I was meaning to surprise you with my head, but what is this? You look amazing. You look amazing. <laughs> I only did it for you, Alejandro, and I have to say to people oh. there, sometimes, you know, as an acting coach, you kind of let yourself go because you think you're not in front of the camera. And I needed to have somebody who's being honest, like you, to say, Mija, what the is wrong with you? Get yourself together, put some freaking makeup on and make yourself look good. And he hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, how dare he? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, you look great. You look beautiful. No, but I have to say, honest to God, this is serious. It hit me like a ton of brick. I'm like, how dare he say that? And then the second was, you know what? He's right. I'm putting myself in front of a camera. Doesn't matter if there's two people listening or watching or, and I'm asking actors to do something. And then myself, I'm a hypocrite because I'm not doing what I'm asking them to do. So thank you for reminding me. Hi, Alejandro Santoni. I have to tell people that the reason why I'm so like, whoa, because you are the first on the show, Hey Stella Podcast, who has won a Best Actor lead role in a feature film for the movie Alberto in the Concrete Jungle. So you're my first winner of a leading role Best Actor winner. Well, I mean, you were part of the of the of this award because I worked with you to prepare for the role of Alberto for the movie. So yeah, no, um, I wasn't expecting to win an award, but it, you know, um, I'm grateful that it happened, and I was I'm happy. Yeah, I, I, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> you say that you weren't expecting. No, I wasn't expecting, you know, winning an award, you know, from my work in this movie. I mean, when I was doing the, the movie, when I was playing Alberto, I wasn't uh, thinking about, about it. Or before, when I accepted the role, and when I put all the work that I, you know, the, that I put in, into the character, I never thought about an award. I was just uh, doing my best I could do to tell the story and, uh, you know, bring myself, you know, to make my own interpretation of, of what was in the paper, of what was in the, in the script. If I were to put it from a perspective of the uh, work into what is that in the language of, you know, method actors or however you want to call them, you are working moment to moment trying to get the best understanding and bring out the best interpretation in the script without thinking of the results. If you're going into something in life, not just as an actor, but if you're going into something because I want to make a lot of money, therefore I'm going to do this job. I want to get a best actor for my work. And that's what leads you in as the first most important thought, then you're never going to get to get it. So working moment to moment the way that you did and trying to convey the best of your understanding of the script. Because if you were another actor, didn't you tell me that the director had in mind a different actor before he met you? Didn't you say something about that? Like he had in mind... Uh, not that he had in mind a different actor. Yeah, a lot of actors came across, you know, him when he was auditioning. It was a long process for him because it was his first movie. So, you know, he, it was very important for him to cast the right, the right guy. Even uh, he, it was going to be a woman in the process of, uh, of him, you know, casting the lead role. He changed it to a woman and then he, 
he changed it back to a man. So he saw a lot of people. But no, I mean, in the script, the name of the, the way it was written, it was not Spanish actor. You know, it was more for like an Indian or American. And the language, it's very American. So I'm sure, and he's American. So he, but he was looking for something different. He didn't, he didn't know what exactly, but he, was, he wanted to cast an actor outside of the box. But that's so amazing. I think this is, what, this is what the lesson is, even though I know the story, but it's just being reminded to me. When did the movie come out? Was it a year ago that we went to the premiere? The movie came out last year, I believe. I mean, yeah, in festivals last year, it hasn't come out yet. Also, it was only a screening for the festivals. It hasn't come out. In, in different festivals, came out last year and also in 2021. It was in a couple of festivals during this year, but it hasn't come out yet. I know soon it will come out. And we keep mentioning the film. So I've mentioned the name is Alberto in the Concrete Jungle and the director. I keep calling him a visionary because every time I posted something, I was so proud of your work in it that's the work that i call great i have the description on hey Stella podcast and it says the one motto that i have it says and i stole it from someone but i don't know who, to be honest good actors make the audience believe great actors believe themselves there's a lot of good work out there but that difference between the good and the great is the difficulty and only a couple, a few, including one, which is you, can achieve. So we keep talking about the director, but he's also in his, just in the way that you were explaining to me how he's worked with you and the understanding that he had of your process and sometimes leaving you alone when you needed to be left alone. His name is Chris Shimojima. Right, yeah. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, his background is Japanese, Chinese. But he's American, American with the Japanese, Chinese background. His mother is Chinese and his father is Japanese. I love it so much because it is a production where you've just mentioned his background. He was looking for someone to do the role, not necessarily you said specifically of Spanish background. No, no. An Italian, wait, because I'm going to Puerto Rico, but then I have to go back. So he did not have the breakdown say, I would like somebody with a Spanish accent, with a, with a no, Puerto no. no, no, but because you went in, what made you go in? What made you not say to yourself, you know what? They're not looking for somebody with an accent. Why should I go in? Well, I, when I saw the description of the character, I could see myself in playing the character. Like when I read the description, I, my imagination immediately, you know, I was started working already. So, uh, yeah, because of that, you know? So I, I thought I could do, I could play this guy. I think it's such a great lesson for everybody to not just go by the breakdowns when something seems like it's outside of yourself. Just go for it. You have nothing to lose. You know, sometimes I get auditions and I read the description of the character and it's just like uh, nothing happens. So there's something there. I, you know, when I get, you know, I'm getting older and, and, and all that. So... I pay more attention to that. Before I was like, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna do anything. I'm gonna go for everything. But now it's very important for me that I like the character, that I, I feel that I can tell the story. There is like curiosity. If the curiosity is not there, then I, I shouldn't be the person to play the part, you know? Why should I even go for the audition? Yeah. Of course. I mean, that's one of the most important qualities when, you know, you think of curiosity, you think of 
children, the way that they're curious about everything and how they say as an actor, you have to unlearn everything that you've learned wrongly as an adult and you have to go back to that openness of the child to want to know, to want to discover. And that's how you have to be when you're actually putting yourself in the shoes of a character in a script. Like, what is this about? Let me discover. That's exactly that, what you're describing right now. It's exactly what happened when I read this, the description of this character because it was bigger than life, the description, like uh, almost like a clown. It was like, you know, it gets to that fine line that this is not real, you know, this is fun, you know, this is, what is this? <laughs> so, so it opened my, my child, I felt free, you know, in the audition, I was completely free because I, I wasn't afraid to fail because the description of the character was inexplicable, was like so big that I was like, whatever I do, it doesn't matter for, with this guy. But that's why I, I, I was attracted to, to the character. I think that's so great that you mentioned that, Alejandro, because most of the people, when they see that, they're a little bit afraid. When they see a character that's bigger than life, clownish and caricature-like, they think, how am I gonna take this on without overacting? So how do you do that? That's a question that I have for you because I get this from so many actors and I just want to like shake them up and say, I have my own answer to it. Well, is your I think, I think myself, you know, my personality has to do with it. I'm, you know, a little crazy, kind of open, you know, very open to explore and uh, very curious in my imagination. I'm, you know, I've always been like that. And, you know, People say usually to me that I'm crazy. <laughs> so you're too big, Alejandro. I'm too big. I'm crazy. I have too much energy, or but this is what I love about. That, so that's why I, um, you know, characters like when they're like that, I am like I can see myself, and I mean I identify myself, and with you know I can I can do that, or I can play something like that. I have to say, the first time that you actually called me up about the role and you sent me the script and I read it, I read it for the first time and I had no idea what was happening. Because this character just goes through so many things. It just feels like what happens to him during the one day, it happens to other people in a whole lifetime. He was meeting and changing and transforming and due to the different people that he was meeting around New York because everything takes place in New York. And I said, I don't know if I can help Alejandro. I don't know if I should tell him I can't help him with this. And then you come over to my place and I was like, Alejandro, I don't get this. And you, you know what you did? Do you remember? You're like, Miha, okay, this is the scene. This is the first scene. The first scene is where he goes over to these people's apartment and then he has to go into to search for something that's of importance that he has to give back to somebody. So he's being blackmailed. And when you walk into the apartment, in the bedroom, there's this little girl. I don't want to give away what the film is, but you have this exchange with her. And when you were demonstrating it, you got up and you were showing me. So he goes in like this. And then he says, give me, I'm not going to do you, but you did it. And I start laughing. And I'm laughing. And I'm laughing. I'm like, Alejandro, I just got the script. I just now understand the whole freaking journey of the character. But it wasn't until you got up on your feet, you did it in practice. Well, but that's uh, how it is always. You know, the papers, a script, it's just, you know, you have to wait for the actor to show you what is what really is about. But the way that you were just able to drop into that sense of humor, the passion that you have, you're so passionate and you're so big and you're so, you're, extroverted you're wearing your heart on your sleeve and it's very similar i think with romanians feel like i'm like that too you know sometimes like when the two of us come together and we talk it's almost like people are like can you guys be quiet take it easy because there's people and other things happening but what i love that you did with that character i felt that you were so able to not just go with that comfort because that becomes a comfort for people like us, that being, you know, over the top. I love so much what you were able to do in the moments where the subtleties that you discover was so smaller than what I would expect 
Alejandro to behave like in that situation. And I think that's what got you the best actor because there's such a stellar, I keep using stellar and I know I steal words from other people, but I admit that I steal them. That's why the performance was so stellar because I feel that you've taken on with that character some of the things that you've gone to in you that weren't comfortable. No, I mean, it's never comfortable. Okay. <laughs> Acting is not comfortable. I mean, it is when you get to a point that you're free, but that takes time for me. But acting is, I, I wouldn't say it is comfortable. It's, yeah. Do you feel that if it gets comfortable, you're not pushing yourself enough? No, no, I, I feel that that's uh, what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming to, all the time, I'm aiming to get to that place of, of feeling comfortable. I might never get there, but I'm always trying to, to feel comfortable with lines that are not my lines, clothes that is not my clothes, you know, situations that I've never been, and the technical aspects of, you know, having lighting on you, well, when you're doing a film or even in the theater, you know, it's a, it's a scenario, it's not real. You're trying to make it real, but it's not, nothing is real. But you have to live truthfully in the imaginary circumstances. The living is real. I don't know. I mean, I, like, what's real? Yeah. You know, what's real? Sometimes I think, oh, that take, oh, it felt so good, it's so real. And the one that I didn't feel anything, that I was like, oh, I wasn't, I didn't feel real. And that's the one. So it's, uh, it's very... Mysterious, I mean, it's such a mysterious... It is mysterious, yeah, it's a mysterious process because life is mysterious. It's like, for example, you think that if something happens to you, you're gonna break down, you're gonna cry like crazy. And then that happens to you and you didn't cry and you were able to take it. So the same thing happens. So what's real, what's not real? I don't think that's important when we are creating or when I am trying to tell the story or creating a character. Yeah, I think it's more important to be in the moment. To be in the moment is more important than being real. Moment by moment, yeah. I think that makes so much sense because there's so many people out there that they consider reality or being real to be moderate. You know, in all these movies that are coming out from Eastern Europe, the ones that I've seen after the revolution, all of them are getting so much applause from the Western world. And then you watch them. And in my opinion, just my opinion, nobody has ever been awarded for acting because when you look at them no actor is different than the other actor if you listen to interviews of those directors and they're being asked about you know how they work with the actors how how are their films becoming so significant to the western world and they say because we've discovered that film acting is natural realistic so they just get this general understanding of what the actor should do. So every actor is the same as the other actor. Every character is the same. They get appreciated for the whole film because of the subject matter being something that the Westerners, you know, yeah. have never heard. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. And, and it's a little frustrating what you're talking about because it, that means conception it's not only in the actor, it's, uh, it's in the industry in general. From the agents to the managers to the casting directors to sometimes directors, the great one, the great directors, I don't think so, but you know. Those are a few. Yeah, they think life in film, it's, uh, it's like this and small and uh, and now in TV, 
even more. So, so that's why most of the things you see in TV, you're saying they're all the same or they seem the same. The writing sometimes, you know, the writer is writing the characters. Yeah. So, yeah, but what are you going to say? That the actor is going to bring his own... But I remember when you did a guest appearance on one of the TV shows. You still have a tape, because I have you taped on everything that you've done. Yeah, you mean? Yeah, the show on television, that already got canceled. It's not on anymore. So I understand that you're saying that, you know, sometimes it's in the writing, but I still am... Uh, what I mean in the writing, don't take me wrong. What I mean in the writing is like, for example, that movie, Alberto on the Concrete Jungle, the character, mm -hmm. you know, was already giving me so much, was already opening the imagination in a way that usually you, you don't get characters like that. Yes. I... You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. It's not about, you know, bad writing or bad writing or bad characters. It's like, you know, I agree that Chris had a beautiful script for that character, for your character especially. I think there was a lot that you could allow your imagination to flourish over. Yeah, the character was very rich, very the, complex and rich, yeah. I also believe that a great actor, which you are the category of, can bring to bad writing something that's going to make it good. I'm not saying that you... Yes, no, I mean, any actor can do... It's going to make it look but writing look better because you're seeing actually what it is. I don't think any actor can. Well, it's actually better than just reading. If you read plain lines and then you see someone, even if they're doing it, you don't like, I think it's more, it's better for me. I would rather just read the script than see somebody do a mediocre acting. I prefer to see the mediocre acting. Uh, yeah, I mean, scripts, writing scripts, I, I mean, I, I'm not like a enthusiastic reader. <laughs> I enjoy more performing in life, you know, like being there, you know, like. Uh, For me, it's different. Uh, maybe because I was an actress and maybe because my imagination is still running wild. So I would prefer rather than seeing somebody do a horrible job. I would prefer that I make them what I want to make them, you know, because my imagination is so much. But that is true. That is true. Yeah. And a good read, you know, your, your imagination also flies like crazy. Yeah. I but agree. FBI, which has been canceled. I wonder why people out there, FBI has been canceled. <laughs> I wonder why. This is what I want to say. Nothing against anybody else. I'm talking about you. I'm going to watch the show. Here we are, we're sitting down. Jeremy's sitting with me, by the way. He says, hi, sitting. You come on, guest appearance. I don't know how long you were on, but then there are the people who are on all the time, the main characters, the two characters, I believe. You come on and as a guest in one episode, and you bring so much more to that guest character you bring all of who you are with your backstory in only those kind of interactions that you have for one episode. So you have no more than one episode to show us who this character is. You come in and you bring to that so-called bad character that you're supposed to play the good nature side. The interaction with the main actress, I don't know the name. Missy Peregrine. She's Canadian. Beautiful, great actress. But what I'm saying, I did not see them bring to their characters that they had chance to because they were on every episode. I did not see them bring themselves. They were just one dimensional characters. And then you come in and you have one episode and you bring everything to it. And I'm wondering at the end of the episode, I want this guy to be coming back. You were more important to that series. <gasps> I wonder what's happened with that character. They should bring that character back. So I'm wondering those people who have the opportunity to see work like you did, don't they think more to say, let's make this series a little bit more complex and let those actors be more complex so then it won't get canceled? Well, you know what? It's a business. It's a business and it's very subjective. Yeah. 
You're right. And, um, we all come from different backgrounds. We have different um, tastes. And what you like, somebody else might not like. True. And um, yeah, that's the reality of everything. Oh my God, I would love. And there's so many people like me, Alejandro, who identify with your version of a person <laughs> no right yeah but yeah i don't know what happened like you know what happened if they you know ever came across to their minds like let's bring this actor back again let's continue the story i i have no idea if they that's what i'm asking i don't know it could happen yeah but definitely they they never wrote more of the character and they never called me back so Whoever was making decisions there wasn't able to see what you're talking about because whatever reasons, but mainly I think it's about taste yeah. and then business. So, okay, I like it. I like whatever. Okay, is this going to make money? And then whatever their own conceptions they have about what's going to make money. It's a business and uh, they're thinking about that all the time. I do feel that there's a little bit of a change towards other people coming to those kind of uh, powerful positions who are more capable of making decisions like the ones that I was kind of speaking about. I want to see more diversity. I want to see, see somebody who's speaking with your accent on a TV show where you are the main character, the protagonist. Because people like me, doesn't matter, I'm not from Puerto Rico, but I'm still with an accent. I'm still passionately living and talking the way that you do with the passion and everything else. Do you know how many people there are in America? It's becoming where the minority is becoming the majority. And people want to be identified with those people on television and in films. Yeah, that is changing and... Uh... Can I ask why the change? Because you look so different. You have this new haircut. You shaved your head. You look amazing. I was uh, too hot. Too hot. That's it. Yeah, too hot. Yeah. I was tired of my hair. Congratulations. What a big event in your life. And Xiomara, your beautiful actress wife. Thank you. I don't want to talk about personal. I don't know. Thank you so much, you guys, for having us over with the little precious. Oh, you're welcome. More than welcome. <laughs> Okay, do you remember? Do you remember when we met? Yes. Ten years. I do. No. Probably in two thousand fourteen. No. 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 Probably two thousand and twelve. Yeah, two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen. And do you remember the last time that we worked together as actors? Do you remember the last time we shared the stage? Yes. Which one? Platonov. <laughs> fun, yeah, a lot of fun. How great you were in Platonov. It was a lot of fun, yeah. I had a great time. A lot of people, and uh, because of that, it was great, yeah. And it, yeah. it was on the stage of the actor Studio. I've always wanted to do Platonov there as a play because it's one of Chekhov's plays that nobody here knows much about. Never was able to do it there, but I wanted to. So at that time... You played Alejandro, I forget the name of the guy, but I'm trying to think. Did you play the doctor, Trilecki, or did you play? No, no, I, I played the, um, the son. You played the son. Right. Sergei. Oh, you played Sergei. Yes, the gorgeous, the handsome guy. And I remember there were so many people in the ensemble and they were like, oh, they're going to do Platonov, it's going to be ensemble. And I was the one that brought this play, you know, to the actor studio, the session. So I was like, let me go be the best that I can be. So I was doing exactly what you were telling us in the beginning of the podcast now, what not to do. I was going for the results. <laughs> I'm going to go show them how great I am of an actress on the stage. And I was like, here I am. You know, the subtext was completely the opposite of what it should have been. We finished the session. Who was the moderator? Well, I think we did a couple of times, but I think the first time was a bow. 
But okay, good. And sometimes it went great. Or Ellen Burstyn, I'm not sure. Yeah, it was both. Or, oh, no, it was Elizabeth Kemp. Yeah. Wow. Really? God bless her. <gasps> I didn't even think we were going to bring her name up. See how this. I it can... was Elizabeth, yeah. So it was Elizabeth Camp, that it was Bo, and then it was, was there once Esther Parsons, or am I just? I, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Anyway, but I just want to say that every time that I think of you on the stage, because that was the last time I saw you on stage, I've seen you on TV, I've seen you, you know, on the big screen, but I haven't seen you on stage, especially with the pandemic. And every time I think of you and your work and what you brought to it, Strasbourg came up with was for this reason. He wanted to give actors a foundation where they can keep bringing the performances to be at the same level of being great. Because it's one time you can have having a great performance by accident, like I did one time. It was really great. But then I went back and I forgot about being in the moment, which you spoke of. And I was like, let me just be great. Let me just be great. And when you say, let me be great, that's when you fail. You know, you fail everything. But I remember with you, with Voynitsev, now that you remember the name of the... You were so great all the time and you were getting all this amazing feedback. Do you remember that? I think so, yeah, yeah. I had a good time. That was such an amazing role. I think I miss seeing people and great work on stage. And that was like one of those great performances and great sessions, the couple of times that we did it. Do you miss being, which one do you miss? Being on set or being on stage? Is the acting different for you between the two? They are different, but they are the same. For me, I think um, in the theater, you, for me, I want to feel the entire space, the entire theater. Like myself is connected to the last wall. And if it's a huge, huge uh, theater, I want to, you know, have a connection to that space as big as it is on film it's it can be the opposite because right you have the camera so close to you most of the time and the other actor is so close to you so you know because of that but but you want to tell the story the same way you want to tell the story play the character or tell the story in the theater you want to do the same thing in film so that's no difference in that sense. But yes, in the medium, it's a different medium. I think somebody was saying that the difference between theater and film for them was theater, the bubbles that are the creation of the character and the story that you want to tell, the bubbles that are underneath, sometimes you have to let them burst. So the person in the last row of the theater can see them and feel them well you have to do the same thing in film you have to you have to let that bubbles be very alive even more so for me it's not about that it's uh let's put it like distance it's a relation to a proximity and uh where do you want to reach how far you want to you want to connect in the camera you you want to reach you want to connect with maybe just the actor that who's here you want to that but in theater, you, yeah. Platon of going back to the same session, it's like there's so many other actors at the same time that you have to be part of in the moment with all of them. Just because you have a scene with this person here, you still have to be aware of the other ones. That also in film, I'm talking about in the theater, I want to reach very far because I want to make the audience part of it because of the audience that is there with you. Film, you don't have that audience. Yes, you do have, you know, the crew, but they're not there to to enjoy a performance in, in film. They're just there, you know, they're doing a technical job. They're not there to respond, so you can go. No, in the theater, the audience, it's to live. They want to live through the experience with you. And film, who wants to live with the experience with you is the other actor and the other actors, well, you know, the ensemble. But... But you don't have to care about, I don't know, but yeah, I don't think you should care about the, the boom guy. You shouldn't feel anything or whatever, you know. 
do you think that it's easier? I know that's a stupid question, but people ask it. It's easier to do acting on stage or it's easier to do acting in film? I think it depends your nature, your nature as your personality. For me, it was more natural when I started acting the theater and I had to go through a process of um, adapting my instrument and my energy to film because of that. And for me, it was, it was more easier to open myself and reach the, and bring a huge space, fill out a huge space. It wasn't that problematic for me. It was more natural for me. But acting for film, I didn't understand it at the beginning because, because of my personality. Yeah, whatever, the way I grew up, my family, yeah. Okay, going to where you grew up. Alejandro, Alejandro is a Spanish name? Yes. Santoni, is Santoni a Spanish name? Santoni, it's an Italian last name. Yeah, okay. I'm from Puerto Rico. So in Puerto Rico, we have uh, many different, how do you say, backgrounds? Yeah, there's many backgrounds. Puerto Rico is a mix of people and cultures. So from my father's side, the Santonis came from Corsica. Corsica is, it was an Italian island and now it's a French island in the Mediterranean. It's on top of Sardinia. Sicily, Sardinia, Corsica. From my father's side, my grandfather and uh, his father, they, they migrated to Puerto Rico when they were young. I didn't know. Because of poverty. I think all that part of the world was going through a war. The parents were sending people to the New World, to America. And there's a lot of Corsican people in the... There's a huge community of Corsicans in Puerto Rico. Right now, the governor of Puerto Rico is from Corsican background. Ricky Martin is from Corsican background. I love this. Tell me more. From my mother's side, they came from Barcelona. Are you kidding? No. So these people came through Puerto Rico, you know, in the, in the beginning of the 1900s, and they married Puerto Ricans. And they established themselves in Puerto Rico. And how do you say that they made business and uh, the family just started to grow and grow and grow. Did you ever go back to your either countries, to Spain and to Italy? No, no, no. I've never been in, or in Spain or Corsica. No, because I'm like third generation or something like that. You know, I was born in Puerto Rico and uh, my mother's grandfather, he was born in Barcelona. He moved to Puerto Rico, but not even my mother has been in Barcelona. I don't know. No, I, I want to go and visit. I would like to. I think it's amazing going back to the same thing that I was saying before about why would I have to be learning these things from someone over a podcast when I could learn them from someone being a character on one of the TV shows that could allow the viewers to understand all these backgrounds. Imagine if the character was a character from Puerto Rico with your backstory. So many people would be so much more cultivated and educated without feeling like we're being educated. But because you would bring all of that history to the character that you're playing. I have no choice. But I know, but what I'm saying, there's so much beauty in the world, in all of us, and we don't get to find out when there's so many platforms, they could just embrace that. And I think they're doing it more. And I think that's amazing. I think it's so beautiful, like the backstory. And, you know, the tennis player now, they just won the, one of the youngest tennis players to win in the women's tennis. I'm not the follower of tennis, but I kept hearing her name. I kept hearing her name, but then I saw that she was playing for England. And I was like, Oh my God, what's her name again? Her name is Emma Reducano. Oh, she's Romanian, Romanian. Well, you know, it is so stupid to think that you have, that you are just one thing in terms of, um, of DNA or to be a human being because the nature of humans, since we were created or whatever happened, how are we here in this world? It's been to move we have been moving around the world so we've been mixing everybody you know so we are all of us all of us so 
even the ones that want to put themselves in those categories, the white people. No, that's what I'm saying. It is stupid to think that way, to think I am just, I am white, I am black, I am this, I am that. No, you're more than that. So much more than that. Uh, last thing that I want to tell you, did you hear I gossip, gossip. You know how sometimes Alec Baldwin, he comes as a moderator to the actor studio. He's one of the moderators. But it was so funny, I found out that his wife, his wife, because you would think, you know, you're married to somebody like Alec Baldwin. He has a career. He, so he comes on his Instagram and he's kind of like, oh my God, I don't have, I have so many kids and I don't have a job. <laughs> I'm like, have you looked at his Instagram? No. So I'm like, is this Alec Baldwin? He goes, oh, this entertainment business, the path of the broken dreams, broken dreams. I have kids. <laughs> He goes on. The he cannot believe that he's got to spend so much time in the Hamptons. He's headed with the beach. He can't stand grass under his feet anymore. Well, you know, that's another nature of humans. You know, we, we are selfish. We only think about ourselves. But we have to. We have to think about ourselves. And he's very lucky. He's a very lucky artist and actor, you know. He's been working all the time, but right now he might be going through a down, you know, and he can't see how lucky he is. But, you know, that's how we are. That's how we are. I'm the same. You know what's so great about you looking at the different comments, and then there are some people who are saying, Bravo, thank you so much, Alec Baldwin, for not being afraid to say what you feel. That's how you feel. It doesn't matter that you've accomplished and you have the money. Maybe having been at a level living your life now you don't have sufficient money because but shouldn't he feel grateful i think he should feel grateful of his career he's he's so lucky but at that moment he was not feeling grateful but that's okay because he's a human being that's just our nature the saying is that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence but it's usually you don't know what's going on everybody's going to their humane up and down but what's so funny so i'm seeing him on instagram out of nowhere i just see it because there's so many of those instagrams that he puts out and then i see this other thing about his wife they're making fun of his wife she is in some of the videos and she's american accent and then they show her that like she's pretending to be from spain because she wants to be eccentric and she wants to be so she's doing this spanish accent so what I'm trying to say is we're so crazy as people. The world is changing, you see, because I am pretending to sound American. We have to do all of that. Well, I mean, people that come from a different country, we have to sound American to feel accepted here because of the culture and whatever here. So I'm glad it is changing, but it shouldn't be like that because I should be myself all the time. I shouldn't sound American. I shouldn't. I shouldn't be aiming to sound American, why? And let me tell you something, it's also a lot of ignorance and miseducation because I sound the way I sound, but even if I sound like, I might not sound some people American, but I do sound American, you know why? Because Puerto Rico, it's part of USA for more than 116 years. The thing is that some of them, they don't know that America has, a, part of it that their native speaking language is Spanish, right? So they think that American is only what they want, and that's not true. American, it's more than that. My accent is American because I am American. I was born an American citizen. Puerto Rico is part of USA, and USA has a territory that their native speakers speak Spanish. And because of that, they are Americans. I think that the times are going to change and I just hope that those people are going to come faster than later to realize that they could still make tons of money with Americans like you in bigger roles and in main roles. You know, I, this is very interesting that I had a breakthrough or something when I moved to New York to study, to train as an actor. I went to, to the Met to the museum. I had to do like an assignment for the American art in the Met, the branch, the American branch in the Metropolitan um, Museum in New York. 
And it was like a religious, uh, because I felt so disconnected to American, because that's how they make me feel, a lot of the Americans, and it shouldn't be like that. But when I went there, I felt so connected to the arts. I was like, but this is, I grew up with this. What I see here, this is what my mom has all over my house. That, that, that's the song I grew up with. And then I realized I grew up in an American. So, so that, that's when I realized, you know, I am just as American and they still want you to make you feel that you are not part of them. But it doesn't make any sense. It's just a limited vision, limited thinking. Yeah. We went to the same school, Alejandro. We both went to the actor studio master's program. It was my first year. I had no idea what I was doing. It, it was after a glass of white wine with Bradley Cooper because we used to go around the school in bar six between breaks because we thought relaxation was white wine. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> so it feels like that. <laughs> At that time, he wasn't Bradley Cooper. I want to ask you, do you feel that you are a method actor? Um, no. <laughs> no. No, because, how do you say, um, everybody thinks different what's a method actor. Everybody has their own view about what's a method actor. So some people think it's that you have to stay in character. Other people think is that if you go very deep, that's a method actor. So they don't even know what's a method actor. The definition changes. Yeah, so you can ask me, do you do this? And I can say yes or no, I'm an actor. I'm an actor. I mean, the way that they, we were taught method, right? I mean, that's what they say, the master's program. Out there, most people think method actor is someone that stays in character. Like, they lose that he stays in character. I don't do that. The reason why I ask you that is because I watched the last great film that I saw. I don't know if you saw it. Did you see it, The Father with Anthony Hopkins? Yes, I did. Did you like it? Yes, I did. I thought it was really great. I thought it was brilliant. So... Yes. The guy, Florian Zeller, the director, who's also the writer of the play, and he changed that play into a film, and he decided that he was going to change what the name used to be of the character to give the name of Tony. So he changed the name from the French name that he had in his play when he adapted it. He says, I want to make it Tony. Anthony Hopkins works a different way than the way that I want to take him. So I'm going to take him on a journey from the director's point of view with the actor through some doors that have to go back into the childhood and the personal, because that's where I see my character to need to go to. But that's great, you know, but that's, every character is gonna ask for different things about you. And I'm sure some characters just, they ask for all of you, others don't. So this character was asking for all Anthony Hopkins, for all of, all of himself. That's not, method actor or it's just what he needed he needed to go there he just needed to to do that in order to to tell the story of tony for example daniel day lewis that people say that he stays in character for the entire movie that's yeah. okay if he has to do that i mean i haven't done that but if i have a character that i have to portray and he's asking me to stay in character the entire movie i'm gonna do it Exactly. You know? I think that it's such a wonderful thing that you just said that to me because I think sometimes I get into one side of my story because I'm in it so much. Anthony Hopkins says in one of the interviews, he says, you know, I have nothing against those wonderful people from the actor studio, but I am not a method actor. But I have nothing against methods, but I'm not a method actor. Who said that? How oh, Anthony Hopkins. But it's just... Putting a label. Again, it's putting a label, but, but that's what they do. People, they want to put a label to everything. And, uh, and, and sometimes it becomes problematic. But I think what you're saying is that different roles demand different ways of going into them. Yes, of course. Yes, definitely. You feel like you don't have to do anything. It's asking for just one side of you. Yeah. Other characters, they're asking for everything. 
that it's something that um, you, you may not know. You may think that you don't have to, but then you discover, I had to. Or probably think, okay, yes, I have to go here. And then something happens, uh, a different direction, and then you discover that you, you, you don't have to go there. To me, for me, it's always changing. You, you have to keep your instrument open. I don't know. If you're in the moment, you don't know what's going to happen. Even more in acting than in real life, because in real life, we don't live in the moment all the time. We don't. But in art, in film, or in acting, I think that is required. So you don't know what's going to happen next. In life, you know a lot of the times what's going to happen next. You already decided how you're going to respond, right? In real life. But in acting, sometimes for great acting to happen or for you to surprise yourself, you can't decide. Acting sometimes becomes more vibrant. There's more life in acting. That's why I get addicted to it. That's why I love it so much because you live, you feel more because in order to make some art or to tell a story that is relevant or, or that touches other people or whatever, you can make a decision of what's going to happen because you don't surprise yourself. And if you don't surprise yourself, yeah, you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Why did that touch me, what you just said? I'm always learning and discovering what acting is about. I ne you never really know what acting is about. Where I am now, I find very rewarding when I do not make any decision at all. And I don't know what's going to happen. I'm moment to moment. I make the effort, the conscious, the conscious effort. I work hard to as much as I can to stay in the moment. You concentrate to stay in the moment. And at the same time, I do that. I try not to make any decisions and just, you know, react. And that becomes much more alive than life itself. Because we don't live like that. For example, if I want to be in the moment right now, do I concentrate on what's happening with me now, with you? Do I give myself the concentration on the place? Do I say, okay, I'm here? I would say that to stay, I think that in order for you to stay very in the moment, you don't have time to analyze mm. and think because you are in the moment. Bit by bit, you're listening and absorbing what's happening in the now. The thinking diminishes and the analyzing diminishes. It should. Acting, I think we aim for that. And that's what I can say for now. Maybe, maybe in a year, I change that perspective about acting. That's what's rewarding for me right now and what I try to do. The evolution of the person, of the humanity, is also part of the evolution of acting and i think that i just kind of became aware of that a little bit more from your conversation today and now you just kind of opened a different understanding where you don't have to say oh my god i'm this or i'm that because everything changes like you said sometimes you do a role and it requires for you to feel absolutely nothing and not give of yourself but one percent does that make you method no and then another one requires for you to go back to one of the worst childhood memory that you can recreate so that's part of method, okay, but that doesn't mean, it's again, like putting definitions that are not worthy of. The main purpose is to tell the story, is to tell a story. And that's what's important, yeah. telling the story. Thank you for telling us your story today. I appreciate it so much. So I'm grateful and I thank you so much. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Miha, I love you, you know. Uh, thank you. Thank you for this uh, time. Yeah, I had a great time and uh, I hope uh, we get to do it again. When a conversation like this takes place, that's when I appreciate the other person so much because it's revelatory within myself without you trying. You're not trying to prove your point. You spoke without trying to change my mind. You weren't. So I just wish that everybody in everyday life outside of acting or doesn't matter 
would be able to have the same recognition when another person might say something they don't agree with because I was a little bit like taken aback. I was like, how, why, why does he say he's not method? Because I think he's method. But then I'm like, just listen. Just listen to what he has to say. So that's when you convinced me and you gave me a different definition of what method is. So I just wish that in everyday conversation, people out there were as open to just taking a step back and saying, can you let him finish? Because I was ready to jump. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. But why do you think I am method? Because I can say Alejandro put so much of who he is and his performances and his i talk about all performances from the studio on the stage tv all of them that i've seen you over the years they're so powerful that they have to be method because he's involving himself but but it's impossible not to involve yourself even if you say your method or not method or whatever yes yes Okay, fine, fine. You have your last word on this, Alejandro. <laughs> <laughs> it, do, it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you label yourself. If you want to call yourself method actor or not. Yeah. It really doesn't matter because what matters is that you tell a story. You portray a character in a story. And Newer understanding of the story having to do with who you are. That's the most important. Yes. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. But a lot of things come into play also. The understanding of the director, the understanding of the writer, the understanding of maybe the other actor, you know, the understanding of many other things. So thank you. Thank you so much. Kisses. Thank, thank you so much, Mia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.